Hello and welcome to my Blender's Unity Tower Defense game tutorial and today we'll be looking at how we're going to set up some little health bars that are going to float above all of our enemy uh, objects and how we're going to show about how we can increase and decrease them on the fly and make sure that they're always facing the camera. So let's get started. Okay, so let's take a look at our um, alien disk here and this what we'll do is we're going to add a, uh, a canvas to the disk that's going to contain if you like three panels and those panels are going to contain uh, a border uh, if you like and that's sort of a red background and then a green background and the idea would be that the green background will sit on top of the red background and it will decrease uh, therefore revealing the red background giving the impression that uh, the health is dropping so let's give this a go the first thing we're going to want to do is on our alien disk here we're going to just drag it in because I think this is the best way to work with these things. Is just drag this in, uh, and then we'll spin it round on its head so we're facing the right, so it's facing the right way. And what we'll do is we'll right-click here and we'll click on um, UI Canvas, and you'll see that thankfully it is a uh, a child of the alien disc, and that's good news. Let's rename this to start with. Let's call this Health Bar. Okay, but I don't know if you can see from our screen, it's huge. Um, and the reason for that is at the moment it's kind of what's called um, screen space overlay. So um, it's uh, effectively um, sort of always showing at the front of the screen. We don't want that, we want it to follow the, the object around. So what we'll do is we'll set this to world space. Okay, and that gives us the ability up here to set its size uh, and position. So what we'll do is we'll for initially, we'll just, we'll just center it out and we'll give it a width of two and a height of one and now you can see if I just press um, F uh, excuse me F there we go and zoom in there can you see that it's it's right in the middle it's hard to see actually let's just bring it up um, and what am I missing here why is it not appearing oh height of look I thought I said that to, there we go height of one there we go sorry about that I thought I'd set that to, to one maybe I missed that okay it's massive now so that's obviously too big so let's just start looking at this let's try and make it 0 0.5 and 0 0.25 right that's looking a bit cl I don't know, hopefully you can see that white line people it'll be let's do this let me quickly add a um, another UI panel to it so it's a bit clearer and we don't want it to have uh, an image. We just want this to be a simple um, color like that. And then we will <clears throat> click on the color, funnily enough, and let's make it black. So we'll drag that right down and make sure the alpha is set to, let me get this around the right way, I was going around the wrong way. Yeah, it's, uh, it's alpha is set to 255, so it's completely uh, opaque. Okay, we're looking okay, but it's still too big and I think it's a bit too high. So let's just click on here again. Um, so let's try 0.25 on that and then no, it's the only thing. 0.5 and then 0.1. Yes, I, I'm liking that a bit better. And then we'll just drag that down. Okay, now you can adjust that to size. For now, I like to keep things honest. And why don't we make the position 0.5 there? Oh, that's a bit low, isn't it? 0.6 on the Y, 0.6. Okay, I'm going with this because I just want to keep the numbers um, honest, so to speak. Um, right, we've got our. This is going to be the border. And just one thing I want to make sure about on this piece is that the yes, you see these little these little points here. These are the stretch points, and I want to make sure that if we resize the the panel, uh, the health bar, then uh, the panel uh, we'll, we'll call this border. Shall we? We'll just press F2 and call it border. The border will resize with it. Okay. Let's make sure to get rid of that hash. Okay. So just press F2 there. Right. So let's copy that, and we'll create a red background. Okay. And we'll overlay the green one on top of that. So let's just do Control D, and we'll call this. Um, I just want to call it background because we don't want it to be red and we'll set this to red for now okay you can see uh, red is 255 green and blue is 0 okay and then do that make sure that the alpha is set to 255 so it's completely opaque and what we can do now is under the um, rect transform you can see these little stretch things here what we want to do is we just let's just try 0.1 no, it's much too much. 0 0.01, yeah. 0 0.01, 0 0.01. I don't think that. I don't think you need to do that one. 0 0.01 and 0 0.01. Okay, and that's created a um, the border that we need, and we're looking good. This is looking great so far. Um, again, I think that's fine. If we um, 
I thought that, that that actually would stretch. It's interesting that the stretching is still on those, those on the canvas there. I thought it would stretch to that point there, but that's okay. <clears throat> so now I think if we just make the canvas bigger, uh, so if we make that say one, you uh, no, I'll just adjust the. I'll zoom out a bit. Uh, make it one. You can see that <clears throat> the red scales with it. What, what was it? 0 0.5. Yes, 0 0.5. Righty, so what we now need to do is this will be very simple, is just to just do control D and we'll call we'll call this health. Alright. The reason I'm not calling this red and green is because maybe we want to change the colours later on. Um, and I'm keeping it generic enough um, to uh, allow me to do that. So what I'll do is I'll just up the green and down the red, and there we go, we've got a nice green colour there. Okay, and this is good news. Now we've got ourselves a health button. This is this is this is great and everything. Um and it's on our alien disc and um there's going to be a couple of issues. One is that if well, the way I was going to do this is um, to to actually um, uh, scale the health, if you like, to go back and forward. What I was going to do is use the scale here on the x-axis and and it, and go down as we go. Can you see? And the but the idea is obviously is that it would go over to the left-hand side. So at the moment it seems to be uh, pivoting in the middle. And if we click on this one, here we go. We can see our pivot point here. This is this one here. I hope that we can drag that. We can. There we go. If we just drag that over to the left there, click it to like so. Now, interestingly, it's slightly red there. I don't know if it, let me so let me quickly what you can do is this. You can click over here and then do um uh if you hold the shift, that's it. Hold the shift down and then we'll do uh this one here, left. That's going to mess everything. Inter uh, this happened before, you see. This is round the wrong way. Um, you notice that left here. It's, it's because if I just spin this round, hang on, it's that it's that way around. So it's kind of facing the back. We don't want that because we want the front to be this side, don't we? So what I think I will do is on the health bar, I will flip it on the y-axis, 180. Okay. Now if we go back to the health, um, and now we put go back to the pivot, uh, holding the shift button down, clicking on there for the pivot being on the left, and then also just clicking this anchors to do stretch there. Now one thing that's really bugging me, I think this wasn't happening before, so let's click on health again, just change the X. There we go, so that's working nicely. I see why it's doing it. It's because of these left and right values. Let's just set that back to 1. And we want that to be 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, no, not you. 0 0.01 and 0 0.01. There. If there is a mark there now, I can't see it. Okay, so I hope that made sense. What I've done is I've moved the pivot to the left-hand side. Okay, kept that up right on the far left. And also made sure the anchors are stretched out. Right, and that means that if I do decide to increase the size of this or decrease it, the... Um, these these red and green things will move with it, which is great news. Okay, so let's um, get let's have a look and see how that looks now. Let's quickly click play. Excuse me, I'm gonna have a little sip of my drink. Ah, uh, let's get rid of you. Hang on. <laughs> so if we click on Alien Disk and then click Apply, that will apply it to the prefab, and then we can delete it from the uh, main scene. And now if we click play, it will use the uh, enemy wave generator to do this for us. As we wait, there it is, and we've got a problem. Okay, the, yes, the, the health bar has kindly moved along with it, but now, as you can see with the first one, you can't hardly see it, and that's because we want it to face the uh, camera at all times. And I need to give a big shout out here to uh, another YouTuber called Octoman, who actually, effectively, all I'm actually doing here is copying his um, <laughs> copying his tool. Um, so I will, as you can see with the Alien Craft, I've already done this. What you need to do is you need to have an update every frame. Let's just zoom out here. I've actually removed the thing, haven't I? An update every frame that says, um, let's face, face this health bar towards the camera. All right, so let's let's create that script now. Um, if I just go to the health bar, which is where I want to be, yes, it is. Or do I want to be on the health? Well, let's just drag the alien disk in. Ignore that particle system, by the way. I've been playing around with that, which is why I've been uh, taking a little bit longer. For now, oh, no, it's the health bar that we want to face the camera, isn't it? Yes, of course, it's not just the health. So let's just create a new script here, and we'll call this um, health 
health manager and the reason I want to call it health manager is because I want this to do a few other things like be able to up and down the um, health values so that you know when the health drops it will actually lower the scale of our health bar okay so we'll call this health manager okay and it's a C-sharp script we'll click create an ad let's go into I think if you do that it goes uh, by default it goes into the assets folder so let's just drag that into scripts and load up mono develop I'll just double click that let mono develop one second I'll, I'll come back when that's loaded okay we need to, with uh, mono develop loaded up what we need to do now is have um, a, a, basically a call in our update script that says every frame make sure that our billboard is uh, our canvas I'm calling it a billboard <laughs> is facing the camera so what I did um, again this is a shout out to Octoman but what I actually did was copy uh, this uh, wiki unity 3d basically you did a search on <laughs> um, what Unity always face camera and the second option that comes up here is this uh, little helper script here and it's this, it's this line here okay transform dot look at so we need a main camera what I actually did was um, I've just if I just set up a camera here if I just say um, camera main camera um, and in the start you can actually say main camera equals camera dot main <laughs> okay um, I guess if you're using multiple cameras you may um, you may, you may uh, have problems with that, but uh, I think the main camera is the one that's... I'm only ever going to be using one camera for my thing, so you might have to tweak that, but I don't need to put any public values in or anything like that to set that. And if we just drag this in, let's just take a little look. Okay, we're going to obviously have a problem with it being called M camera, so let's quickly replace those. Ding, ding. Okay, and that looks all right. That looks okay to me. Transform look at transform.position plus main camera I don't actually understand quite how this works um, there's, some, there's some multiplication of vectors going on here which scares me uh, thank, thankfully um, I'm not going to spend too much time on it maybe if I've got some time I'll take a look at why it works but let's just like a lot of things let's just um, plug it in and see if, see what happens when we run this in unity so we need to grab our health manager we, uh, we've got our um, alien disk here so let's just grab our health manager and drag it onto the health bar like so okay and uh, let's do, let's apply it let's apply it here so we'll click on the alien disk click apply delete it and run it let's see how that gets on if we're lucky ah oh, I'm, I'm already liking it look can you see it's, it's yep it's doing the right thing. This is fabulous news. Can you see now, guys? It's although although the um, alien discs are turning, the actual um, health bar is always facing the camera. If I just do that again without maximising on play, and look at the scene view, I'd imagine we'll see that if if uh, if we watch kind of from this angle, I guess. Hang on, let's zoom out. We'll see that. Oh, no, wrong side. We'll see that health bar. Yeah, as you can see, that's really cool. It's always it's always pointing towards the camera. Can you see that? As you can see a slight angle there. I love that. That's very very good. This is brilliant. Now the one thing we need to check is that this is actually facing the right way with that uh, statement we just run. So let's just pause this, and what we'll do is we'll just pick on say you, grab the health bar, the health, and then set the scale on this to 0.8 or something like that. Okay, so we make, so we know that it's more than so it's 80 percent. Don't don't do 0.5, otherwise you'll be might get confused. But 0.8, it's not showing anything yet because we need to unclick the pause. And this is good. Now I don't know if I'm, I'm making that clear, but the red is on the right hand side. I did notice that um, <laughs> the red was on the left hand side. So the, the the pivot point, if I zoom in, was on was on this side incorrectly. If that happens try changing vector 3 dot forward to vector 3 dot back or vector 3 dot up to vector 3 dot down yeah uh, if that has so I'm not having that issue now um, so um, this is good news but it but I think that that can happen so you may have to flip those round so that this is facing the right way but that looks to be working beautifully now this is all great but the actual um, turrets uh, the enemies excuse me don't have any health to speak of this is this this health bar is brilliant but there's nothing to link them together so let's work on how we're going to start putting some health values into these um, enemies and getting them decreased by our enemy uh, by our turret as it as it shoots at them now I appreciate there's no particle effects here so we have to just pretend that it's shooting at it in the next tutorial I'll go through creating some particle effects to give this a sort of a muzzle flash effect so that it looks like it's firing at the um, enemy and I may 
do something along the lines of making this enemy go red or something like that to show that it's um, taking damage. But now let's work on uh, setting up some health for our enemy objects. And there's one more thing I should mention before I move on to doing the health of the enemy and that is that we should copy this health bar over from the alien disc to the alien craft as well. So let's do that. So in order to do that what we need to do actually is we need to grab both of the alien craft and alien disc and drag them onto our scene view. Okay and in the alien disc what we'll do is we'll just grab this health bar, we'll right click, do copy and then the alien craft and click paste and then we'll just delete the alien disc and on the alien... that didn't work did it? Oh no, no it, is, it is there, look we need to drag it into there, there we go, so it's actually in a, a chart. I thought that would have worked if I pasted that in but it didn't did it, it seems to stick it directly on the uh, scene view. Okay, I think that's all we need to do, let's, let's, um, uh, we obviously need to apply that, so let's just do that, let's just apply that now, so that's added to the prefab, but I think that should work out of the box because these aren't, um, any different. What would kind of be good is if we could maybe make this generic. I'll have a little play with thinking how we can make this generic so that we don't have to copy it from one prefab to another. Let's just delete you now. Make sure we apply you again. I wasn't sure if we did. I think we did. Okay, now if we run it. Our alien craft should have them as well. If you saw that earlier on, by the way, that's probably because I was... Um, I had actually attached it. And I was playing around with it and hadn't deleted it. So apologies, apologies if I was confusing you, thinking, well, how did that? How did that happen? Okay, so we can see that our alien discs are moving along nicely with the health bar always facing us. And any second now, any second now, when you're ready, here come our alien crafts. Yes, and they also have the same thing. You can see they're spinning, right? You can see they're spinning. But the good news is that the health bar is always facing us. Great. Right, now let's get on with putting some actual real health values into our enemy objects. Now in order to do this, the first thing I've realized is that one of the scripts here, that one of the scripts we just created is called Health Manager, and I don't like that name. So what I will do is I will go into Mono Develop, and I'm just going to try clicking on Health Manager here, pressing F2, and I'm going to call this Health Bar Manager, and see how kind it is. It's renamed it there to healthbarmanager.cs, and if we spin back to Unity, well that's a bit weird, but it looks like it's worked there. This is good. Let's just have a quick look at our um, prefabs. I think to do that, to see the script in there, excuse me, this model is just going to prefabs, alien craft, health bar. Weirdly, it's not behaving itself. So let's quickly um, get rid of some of this stuff here. I think it's gone a bit loop the loop. So let's just remove the um, alien disk from there, the uh, enemy status. And also let's just remove the, um, let's just drag that in, just see if we can see it from here. Hang on one second, health bar. It's saying there's a couple of scripts missing, which isn't really true. Remove component and remove component. And I don't know what this graphic ray caster is. I'm hoping that's uh, something that comes with, <laughs> comes with the canvas. Um, and let's just get our script back in here and just drag health bar manager into the health bar. Okay, so it's being a bit of a monkey, is it? Even though this script is here, it's saying, cannot find the script. So let's just quickly go over here and just do, oh, it didn't, what? Let's try that again. Oh, maybe I'll just do a rename that. Let's just try it, bar manager. Let's control S on there. Now, how's it doing? Sorry, I hadn't expected this to be such a problem. So let's just try that in, drag that in. Okay, now it's behaving itself and Health Bar Manager is there. Let's go to the, um, let's apply that. And let's just grab the Alien Craft as well while we're at it. Drag that in. Um, and then we will grab our, we'll click on the, the Health Bar. There it is. And we'll, oh yes, it seems to be suffering the same problem. We just created like two of them. Okay, that's fine. And so what we'll then do is we will get our scripts folder, health bar manager, drag that in. Okay, good. Let's just give it a quick test. Uh, we can do. Uh, let's quickly apply that. Delete the pair of them from the screen, and press play. And I hope that's worked. It's facing the wrong way. Uh, no, I'm not facing the wrong way. I am facing the wrong way. No errors. 
and it looks as though yes we're good I'll just bring that up a bit shall we so we can you can see there that's working that's good right okay apologies for that right let's work back now 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 we've called that health bar manager and uh, apologies I don't I don't think I did that beautifully I could have sworn that I did do F2 to rename the the file and it renamed the file but didn't rename the class that could be a mono developed bug I'm not sure so I think that's a bit clearer now that it is the health bar manager. So actually creating the health itself should be quite straightforward. So let's um, create a new script, create a new C sharp script, and we'll just call this enemy health um, manager. Pardon me. I'm tempted to say enemy health manager. You may want to call it something else. Yeah, let's call it enemy health manager, and then we'll just. We just Double click on that and then bring it in here. We just realistically, all you need to do is say public, say public float uh, max health. Uh, we'll just say equals 100f as a default, and then we'll have also have a public float current health. And in the start menu, we will say current health equals max health. Okay. Um, and I think we should have a couple of methods here. Let's just sort out the uh, line ending thing. Couple of methods here. We'll have one called public void reduce health. Oh, no, capital R. Reduce health uh, float amount. Okay, and then we'll say um, um, current health equals uh, minus equals amount. Okay, and that will that'll work then is we'll say here. If brackets current health is less than or equal to zero, f um, destroy game object. Actually, just to be absolutely clear, let's just um, um, yeah, let's just have a um, a public bool as well is alive, and we'll set that to true, and then here we'll say. Um, is alive equals false. Okay, we might we might use that later on. Now, and also we should put here to do some sort of actually no, not it's not before the game object is after this to do uh, some sort of particle explosion before we destroy the game object. Sorry, sorry, the enemy. Let's just be. Let's get straight down to it. Okay, this is good. This is a good start. And we can, I think, with, without much question, we can just simply add that on there uh, to our. If we just bring back up our prefabs, um, pop that there. Now, can we? Can we lock? No, let's just drag. Let's just get on with it. Let's just drag these in, and then I will go back to the scripts folder. And it's the enemy health manager, isn't it? Yep, that's the one. So we'll just drag one into alien disk. And uh, we'll want it to alien craft, okay? And then we'll just select those two. I think no, you have to do it one by one, okay? I'll click apply, and click apply. Well, this is good and all. Um, hang on, oh, I like the way. They, oh, there we go. I didn't remove them, uh, and the turret aimed at them, which is quite cool. But we need to do. We do need to remove them. But that hasn't done anything much, has it? Really? That hasn't actually um, achieved anything other than now saying, well, these these guys now have um, a hope. Enemy health, there we go, max health and current health, you see. And that's wonderful, but it's not really being taken down, is it? So let's see if we can get our turret to um, to actually do something here. Let's get our machine gun turret. Let's get our machine gun. Again, please ignore the uh, particle system. I'm tempted to remove that. What was the script? Turret targeting system. Okay, so let's find that here. That's this one here. Let's just double click and go into here. Okay, I believe we wrote a method called maybe fire. Here we go. Now I think the best way to do this is to have, I'm very tempted to actually stop using game objects as the current target, but what we'll do is we'll say um, enemy health manager, current enemy health, something like that, right? Okay, and then um, when we add our Object here, cloud .game object tag enemy. We'll say also um, on trigger enter. I thought that on trigger enter was going to um, add the current target, but it doesn't, does it? So no, no, it locks on, doesn't it? It's the lock on process that does that. So where are we? Current target. 
Check for an easy range. There we go. That's the one. Okay, current target state equals locking on that. So here we'll say current enemy health equals um, current target dot get component. I think we just need to say enemy health manager. There it is. Is it going to be kind? That might work. Right. Okay. So what we've done now is we've we've got ourselves the link to the health of the specific enemy that we're aiming at. Let's just give it a quick run. See if there's any surprises. Did I click it? I did now. Let's just see how we go. They're coming in. I was wondering. No, it looks like there's no errors. Okay. I, I probably should put a debug in there, but I'm going to take it. For, <laughs> I'm going to take it as read that it has actually. Um, got the enemy health manager for the uh, target that it's aiming at. So this is good. So now what we could do is under maybe fire what I will do is I will say current enemy health dot reduce health and if I say by brackets um, time dot delta time times um, if I just say 20 at the minute, so it's going to reduce 20 health a second. Now let's do 30 a second. Okay, 30F. Okay, so that's going to reduce it very slowly, but but um, 30 by by doing time delta time means it's going to reduce the health by 30 a second. Let's just have a look and see if that actually works now. Here they come. I'm just going to click on this one. Uh, here, I'm just going to pause it a second. Um, it's this one, and I want to click on the. Uh, no, it's here. It's the health, current health. There we go. Crikey, it's gone down quickly. Okay, I'm going to press. I'm going to undo. Can you see this here? Forty-four point five. So it is working. Let's just um, un unpause it. It's going down, and it's gone. Now there's a problem. I would imagine it's got upset. It's saying yes. Can you see that? Ooh, blast. When it's gone, it looks as though it's still trying to find it. Although I thought it was checking for null. So it's going to just, it's going to take it out, and then when it goes, it's oh console, excuse me. It's saying the object of the game object has been destroyed, but you are still trying to access it. Okay, I thought I did check if it was null. Let's just have a look at our script then under the turret targeting system. Double click that. And we've got where is maybe fire? Ah, maybe fire here is not checking. <laughs> okay, so we're saying um, if brackets um, current enemy health is not equal to null, um, and current enemy health dot is alive. I think that's all you need to say. Uh, that's it because it's a boolean. So it'll return true or false. It's going to reduce it. Okay and then I th how do we... Yeah I think that's going to be okay. It, clearly uh, what I was hoping was that the on trigger exit... Let's just debug dot log that. Enemy went out of range, moving from right. I was hoping that the on trigger exit would fire when the object was destroyed, but it's very possible that's not happening. So let's just bring up the console again. And we'll click on this one. There's its health. I hope that's the one. We'll see that going down. Any second. It's not happy. Okay. The object of game object has been destroyed, but you're still trying to access it. Well, I thought I had. Let's just see where it's doing it. Hang on, before we go nuts, it's doing it at uh, targeting system .cs line 92. Right, so it's doing it in the look at target. Okay. Um, again, so let's just do the same thing. I think for now, I might tidy this up and try and work out a more generic way of doing it. But let's just do this. Let's drag those in. Um, yeah, okay, um, we'll just say else, um, what's it, we're going to say 
enemy game objects dot remove um, current target I think we'll do the same here um, okay now let's try it okay let's see how we get on now I'll have a sip of my tea click on you I think you're the one yeah you're the one I'm expecting to see your health go down here there it goes going down going down going down pop it looks like we've got problems still no errors I know why I know why we're almost there and we had to say um, current status isn't it current turret state equals turret state dot idle and we'll do that as well here I'm tempted to try and stick that in, a, in, a, in some sort of function uh, so that we don't have to do it twice okay now let's have a look what's this okay messed that up so let's have a quick look at that current target state excuse me was it Turrets. Oh. Sorry, guys. Current turret state, not current target state. Sorry about this. <laughs> current turret state. There we go. We'll do the same here. There we go. So turret, target, same thing, isn't it? I'm hoping they disappear. There we go. Let's try it. Another sip of my tea. By the way, you, you're you probably noticing that, um, there we go, it's doing it, look. Is it going to get rid of that one? There we go, there it is. But you're, one thing you're probably noticing is that it's not removing them. That one got away. Okay, good. Uh, sorry, it, it's not, it is, yeah, I got rid of that one, uh, but um, the health isn't going down. So the reason that's happening is because uh, although the health is attached to the enemy, there's no, it's not informing anything that the health is going down. So what I'd like to do is use the very same delegate system that we used in yeah. enemy wave handler, enemy wave, and then um, apply that here and have a listener on our health bar manager that's actually adjusting these. So let's do that now. Let me just remind myself which was the um, which 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 one it was that had the delegate. Oh, that was a good look. Enemy path route. This is it here. Excuse me. Um, uh, public delegate void reach end target action okay so we'll, what we'll do is we'll just grab this one here I'll just grab these guys control C and I'll go over to my enemy health manager and I'll just paste them in here but obviously we're going to call that we're going to have it something along the lines of um, health changed um, health change action yeah uh, and what we'll do is we'll pass a couple of values in there we'll say float current health and float uh, max health all right and the reason we're doing that is because I want to part if um, although max health may not be useful for a lot of things it's going to be very useful for our health bar manager because we need to kind of work out what factor what percentage of health is remaining so I'm going to pass both of those in and then we'll have a health change action here oh <laughs> so we'll call it on health changed action good and then we'll say down here reduce health if brackets on health changed action is not equal to null call it like that I can't exactly remember uh, enemy path route it's here somewhere yeah oh well, hang on though <laughs> we need to um, we need to pass those two pair variables in as well where are you enemy health manager there we go this is this, that should have thrown an error and we'll just say current health comma max health current health comma max health oh so what we're doing here now is we're saying okay every time the health changes if anything is interesting in, list, in listening to a health change on the enemy then um, 
then call this method I want to health change action this is I'm, I'm tempted to say this could be used for the turret as well uh, so it's worth thinking about but for now the, the key one I'm interested in is the um, health bar manager so in order for the health bar manager to get access to the uh, enemy health manager it needs to be able to kind of work out um, whereabouts it sits in the tree now let's just have a quick peek at uh, unity again if we just drag uh, let's just hide you and let's drag in the um, alien craft oh uh, let's bring in the alien disc I like you I like to use that one to start with um, the health bar here, it has the health bar manager script there, whereas the actual uh, enemy health manager, if you like, is above it. Okay, can you see that? So the health bar here, this is the one that's going to uh, going to um, uh, register. It's going to need to register with this enemy health manager. So the way we're going to do that is as follows. We're going to say enemy health manager ehm equals this. Basically, this game object get component in parent. And that component is the um, enemy health manager. There. Okay, so what we're saying here is um, the enemy health manager that we're looking for is the parent. Is the, in our parent, there's a script called um, enemy health manager. We'll go and get that. Could the component, right, which is a script. Okay, uh, let's just um, put this below it, actually. And then here now we can say ehm. Dot, um, plus equals, hang on, let's make sure I got that right. Let's just close that one down. My apologies, enemy status is a bit confusing. It is on health changed action. And face camera we can hide as well. These are the ones I was playing with earlier on. Um, on health changed action, that's it. So on health changed action plus equals, and then we'll have a method in here called um, uh, handle health changed action. That's good, isn't it? I think that's um, done it for me. And it's created that. Oh, that's wonderful. Have I actually found a... Um, a short, a uh, mono develop shortcut. What's it doing there? There we go. Handle health change action. It's created for us. Fabulous. Okay, so what we're saying here is we're registering the um, this method to be called whenever the health has changed. And now we can say in here, um, we so we have our um, what is this? This is the health bar manager. Okay, let's for now, let's just put a debug in there. Debug.log. Yep, I, uh, I can see that the health is now quotes plus current health okay bracket semicolon right so we can see that our health bar manager is at least uh, firing whenever the health changes so let's quickly go back into unity and fire this up I appreciate this is fairly complicated because we're saying we're sort of looking in our parent for the script and um, I could have done this differently oh hold on hold on hold on hold on let's delete you let's just um apply you. I don't think I need to apply you, but I'd just like to do it anyway in case I've missed something. So let's try that again. And pop over to the console here. And they're going to come through. I'm expecting to see a few things actually. It's going to come through. Yep, I can see it and it's, there we go. Bish bash bosh. There we go. So that is working. Lovely. And that's going down as well. You can see it goes below zero, which is fine because we checked that it was below zero, less than or equal to zero. Good. Right, so now our health bar manager is picking up Let's pop back over to our alien disk, drag you on, that our health bar manager script is uh, is correctly registered. So it's saying here, um, yes, I'm happy that we've got the, uh, um, every time the health changes, I'm, I'm going to be called. That's brilliant news. What we need to do is we need to get that, let's bring it back into Unity, we need to get this this panel here. Okay, and we're going to, and it is a, and, and the rec transform, and we'll set the scale on it. All right. Okay, so let's, um, Let's quickly set that back to one. Okay, I should just do revert. No, there we go. Um, so for our health bar is to say, right, get the um, get the health thing. In fact, we should probably do that in the startup as well. So let's just do that. So we're going to have a rec transform um, health rect transform, and then we'll say here as well. Health rec transform equals game object dot get component in children <laughs> and it is um is it get component game object dot bear with me I need to remind myself what that is. 
Oh, apologies, it is game object dot transform. That's what we need to do. Dot get child, and it is. Um, I think it was health, wasn't it? Um, that's not, that might not work out of the box. Hang on, let's just see. It, uh, health, yeah, we've called it health. Can you see there? So we get child. I'm surprised that's working as is. Let's just save that and see if Unity lets me get away with it. I don't think it can. Okay, that's an interesting one. Hang on, let's make sure. Uh, health by manager CS fourteen comma sixty. This is it. Yeah, so this is it. So we need to say um, dot transform, and I think that's still going to fail because actually a rect transform. So we might need to get child in. Get, I thought it was get child. Hang on. Get, get child. Okay, I'm just going to stick with that. That's the index one. I don't want to use index, I want to use a name. Hmm. Bear with me again. Sorry guys, a bit rusty. It's it's find. It's find we want. <laughs> That's what we want. Health. And then um dot transform. Okay, let's see how that gets on. I'm expecting that still to fail. I just want to make absolutely sure, not you, sorry. Confuse things. Yep, so it's saying, hang on, I can't transform a rect transform to rect transform, but as it turns out, rect transform is a uh, subclass of transform, so we should be able to cast that with a quick cheeky um, rect transform there. Now do control S, let's see how it's. It is saying it's a warning, no, but never used exactly right, so um, we've actually assigned it now. So what we can do finally, finally, I hope this is making some sense. Like I say, please comment if, if I'm absolutely, completely baffling you here. I'll create a Unity package as well and put a link on this so you guys can have a play around with it. And now we can finally say health rec transform um, dot local scale equals new vector three. Um, so it's going to be current health. This is, remember, this is the x-axis first. Uh, comma uh, current health over max health, comma one f, comma one f. Although I think that can be zero. Let's have a quick look and see what it is now. No, it's all they're all one, so we'll set them to one f like that. Okay. Now we can just let's just hide that a second. So let's see if this is working. Right, guys, let's just have a, just have a quick recap and understand what we've done here. In order to register that this health bar manager wants to know uh, if the health changes, we had to do a little bit of jiggery pokery to go and work out where the enemy health manager was. We had to look up the tree and then we registered that we were interested uh, in knowing when any health has changed. And we, in fact, we said this is the method that's going to get called, this one here. Okay, and then when so that's great, and we've done that, and it worked. You recall, whenever the health changed, it got called. It didn't actually do anything then. So what we have to do now is we have to say, well, we've worked on this little bit of scale earlier on with the uh, the green bar going up and down. So let's um, get that health rec transform. You only need to get it once, obviously, because it's not going to change. And then now, if the health changes, we can set the scale. Okay, between zero and one, obviously, where zero is. Um, nothing, effectively no green, and one is all green. Um, and you, the way you do that, you see, is by doing this here. So it means that if max health is, is you know, is 300, then current health, this is going to be a, a value between 0 and 1. All right, let's try it. I've got to tell you guys, uh, let's quickly click on you and just click apply. Like I say, I'm, I'm pretty convinced I... There is a way of knowing, isn't there, if it's changed or not. Let's yeah, let's have a play with that in a minute. Let's, get, let's focus on the on the job in hand. Right. Bringing you up, sir. Bottom one here. Here it comes. It's coming in. And can you see? There it does. It's going down. Pop. Oh, guys. This is working more better than I could have hoped. Oh, go on. They've got through. They're all getting through. Sorry, they're not. No, they're not all getting through. Oh, there we are. That one got away. Look. That one got away completely. This is the kind of thing we want. <laughs> you may recall the. the um, the actual health, uh, the damage this thing does was, I just stuck in 30 as a guess. Let's just see if these guys are working. Yes, they are. Pop away. Oh, we just missed it. Oh, look at that. It's, it's flashing. <laughs> okay, now these guys aren't disappearing when they're red. Oh, yes, they are. Yes, they are. He must have just, just... Hmm. Let's just pause it a sec. I want to I wanna have a look at... 
you just have a quick look at your um, health bar. Uh, health bar? Alien Craft, excuse me. The health is. That has to be a lie. Doesn't it? That suggests to me that it's not getting the new value. That's worrying. Because it's saying current enemy health is 100, when clearly it's not 100. Let's just have a quick look at you. Um, again, you, excuse me. And the health is 100. I'm just going to run this again then. Let's run this again and see what's going on there. We saw a few of them get away with it, didn't we? It looks that like maybe we're not resetting the... Um, Resetting the health. Well, these ones look absolutely fine. Pop. Do you know what I might try? Because we've been fiddling around with the disc, haven't we? We haven't played around with the. Um, we haven't copied it to the alien craft. So what I might do? Yeah, these. I think these guys are working okay. That one's interesting. Again, we'll just click on the. I'm asking to click on that. No, fine. Look, you can see it's 0 0.1 out of 100, so it got away with it. I'll accept that. Let's carry on and see if this one gets away with it. No, I think those ones are working. I'd really like to see it. Yeah, see that one there. Something's happened here. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's quickly stop this. Let's um, click on our um, prefabs. We'll bring in both of them, drag those in, and on our alien disk, we'll just copy that health bar there, and we'll click over here on the alien craft and delete that health bar. Yep, I'm going to click it, right click, paste. It doesn't copy into it, which is annoying. But there we go. Okay, so now we've copied the health bar in there. I told you I wanted to keep this generic, didn't I? Actually, saying that it might not work, but there we go. Right, the quick, the thing I was going to say to you was, have you noticed it's gone black, which means that. Um, it's no longer um, the same as the prefab, but if we click apply, you can see that it goes blue, which means it's a, it's the prefab there. So now we can delete that and delete that. Now let's give it a go. Let's see how that gets on. Exciting. Here we go with our first 10. These seem to be behaving so obviously they're just popping away as rubbish, but that's not a concern right now. We'll work on the explosions in the next tutorial. These are definitely working, aren't they? You can see that. That one just gets away, doesn't it? Oh yeah, you see, it's got a bit of health. That one doesn't. That one. Oh, it's close. I think, let's just make sure. Let's just check you. Uh, health is not, current health is 0 0.10, look, so he got very close to... But let's just check on these boys. These are the ones I care about. Okay, you look like you look like you have got some health left. Yep, four. Okay, we'll keep going. No. I'm pretty convinced that this here can you see? Oh, my apologies guys, I can see what I've done. I've got the script here twice. This is my fault. Right, so let's quickly I think I know what might be going on. I think I need to bring my alien craft back in. This is not something you will experience. <laughs> um, and just remove that component there. So we've just got the enemy health manager. I think that might have been what's going on there. Let's just, um, is alive, yeah. Now let's apply that. And just, just to keep things honest. No, no, let's, let's, do, let's do it properly. Let's do it, oh, uh, no. Well, actually, yes, let's just see if that works. Yeah, that's gone. Okay, good. Here we go again. See, it's completely missed that for that one there. It's interesting, each time it does something slightly different, doesn't it? I like that fact, though. I like the fact that it's not a complete um, guarantee each time. I like a little bit of randomness. But these are, bit, you see, it's behaving itself. Yeah, I can see there's a bit of health there. I'll let it off. I'm not sure about you. I think we agreed that you were okay. You look definitely like you've got some health left. Come on, one of you die. No. You again. 
No, 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 no. Current health is one. Look, can you see this here? So, okay. We just want you to destroy one of them. Is this a joke? <laughs> right, in order to prove the point here, I'm going to up the damage that this thing does. <laughs> oh dear, right, machine gun. And the script is called what? Turret targeting system, wasn't it? That was it. Let's pop into our scripts here. Turret targeting system. This is the way I should have done it before, just to prove the point. And it's down at the bottom somewhere, isn't it? 30F. Let's make that 50F. Okay. Run the whole thing again. Let's just click on you. Apply you, if you needed applying, and delete you as well. Right, now you're going to do some damage, aren't you, uh, turret? <clears throat> Like I say, we're not going to keep that at 50. Okay, it's doing a good job now. You see it's destroying all of them. Lovely. Normally, obviously, it wouldn't do this well. Oh, it's missed one. Or has it? No! <laughs> right, come on. These are the ones I care about. Sorry about that. Here we go. Now I'm happy that it's doing what it's supposed to do. Look, you can see it was always working. It was just me. Um, it, it, some of the health was just getting us getting away with it. This is good. This is good. This is looking perfect, guys. I'm happy that this is working exactly as I wanted it to now. That little health bar is dropping down. We need to work on this fact here, this, this uh, maybe fire thing, uh, to get this value here uh, some, in some generic way. Perhaps we could put it up here, in fact. Let's just do that for now. We'll just say public um, uh, damage per second, right? Damage per second equals 40F. Okay, and then let's just click on that. Control C, and then we'll just slide that down here to that. Okay, and that at least, that at least um, makes it a little bit more controllable. What's the matter with you? Or oh, public float. There we go. Okay, and I think that is all I'm going to do for today. This is really, really good. We've made some good progress. We've created the, the health bars that go above each of the enemy turret, enemy, enemy objects, and we've made it so that our turret can shoot them. In the next one, what we'll do is we will make the uh, make the uh, particle effects so that we can have some explosion and perhaps some sort of muzzle flash that shows that this actual turret is doing something. I think that'll actually be quite easy. I'll have a little play around and see if I can get that working. I wasn't 100% happy with how I got it working the other day, which is why I've kind of started working on this tutorial here thank you everyone for watching i hope i've made sense please like comment and subscribe particularly if, you, if i'm being confusing let me know i will um, do my utmost to respond to you within you know within a day <laughs> all the best see you next time bye bye